Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC cash cam training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Wood Carver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello, everybody. One of these days I'll work on getting a better intro. How are y'all doing tonight? Hopefully you're doing well. I want to thank you for joining me tonight, and I want to apologize for, <clears throat> for not being here last night. Um, uh, normally our classes are every Tuesday night from 7 to uh, or 7.15 to whenever we finish, uh, but last night I had a little bit of a vet emergency. My poor pup uh, running around in the yard. I don't know how he did it. Uh, but he was running around. He's like a little rocket racing around and everything. And uh, he run into something and he sliced up his toe or his paw and ripped out a claw. So, uh, or claws, but um, he got injured pretty good and stopped him dead in his tracks. And I had to get over to the uh, vet, emergency vet, and get him taken care of. So I apologize about that. But. We're here tonight. Thank you for joining me, and um, let's go ahead and uh, get ready to jump into it. Give me just a moment here. Bum, bum, bum. I got all kinds of files open here. I wasn't sure what was going on. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, oh gosh, let's see here. <clears throat> About February, around February of 2018, I did a game night uh, class uh, back before I was on Spindle TV on here uh, and on YouTube and stuff with Spindle TV. I did a... Uh, I used a different kind of broadcaster and everything, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't really public. It was just kind of uh, condensed to the people who um, uh, I sent an email out to and stuff. And uh, in game night, uh, we went over uh, a few board games. Uh, we did uh, we made an aggravation board. We made a Connect Four game, uh, cribbage board. Uh, we play, We made a tic tac toe game, and. Um, Tonight, I want to add to that, uh, that collection of board games, and um, I may uh, look at making all the uh, games available, all the files and stuff available to you guys, uh, and uh, tonight, I want to look at a game that it has a lot of um, different names, if you will, um, cards and jokers, uh, marbles and jokers, pegs and jokers, a kind of uh, derives uh, from uh, Parcheesi a bit uh, and, and everything, uh, but I think it's commonly known as Marbles and Jokers, um, and we'll just kind of call it that. <laughs> that's what it is, but that's what we're going to be making, and I want to um, uh, add this. The great thing about this game is the pieces are pretty cool to lay out and design, uh, and um, they connect together in this game could be a two player, four player, uh, six player or an eight player game. Uh, and uh, the parts are adjustable and everything. So I think it'll be fun. Uh, it's not necessarily about the project itself. It's about the fundamentals and tools and the things that we look at uh, on the, uh, you know, the layout. And with that being said, Hello, everybody, <clears throat> and uh, let's go ahead and jump on over to the Vetric software as soon as I get my screen resolution up to where it's nice and big for you guys. Let's keep on. I'll keep on filling the air with talking while I set up the display settings here real quick. All right. Glad you all could join me. Let's see here. We need this. 18, 1280s. 
Oh, that's nice and big. All right, I think we'll go with that. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat. I don't know why tonight. All righty, Aphrodite. All right, let's get on over to the Vetric program. Whoa. That was trippy. <laughs> let's try that again. And here we go. All right. So I've got kind of a rough layout here, just kind of started, but let's let's jump back a little bit and let's talk about our setup. Now, this is going to be a two-sided job. Uh, this profile that you see here, this rough profile that I'm going to finesse and stuff, uh, these uh, parts kind of connect together with half lap joints and almost like a mortise and tenon, if you will. Uh, so there's going to be a front and a back side uh, to these parts and everything. And so uh, I'm going to set it up as a two sided job. And right now, because each of the game rails, if you will, are around roughly around 14 inches in length. Uh, I'm just going to set the project up for a 16 inch wide uh, by 11 and a quarter. We'll probably bring that down a little bit. Uh, and I should be able to cut, you know, two of the eight maximum eight pieces uh, out of, a, you know, different boards. Cause I might cut some out of walnut, some out of, you know, maple, some out of cherry, you know, and get some variety of boards and all. So we'll probably do maybe two per each board. So we'll end up narrowing it down. But for right now, I got it in there at 11 and a quarter, uh, like a one by 12, if you will, and uh, three quarter inches thick. Now, I'm going to set this back up the way I normally set it. Uh, when you're setting your Z0, you can touch off on the top of the material for each side. You can touch off on the bottom of the material, which would be your wasteboard or your tabletop for each side. Since we're cutting these parts out, I recommend a wasteboard, of course. Or you could touch off on the same side to where you will touch off on the wasteboard on side one. And when you flip the board over, you'll reference off of the top of side two. Um, however you want to set it up. I am going to be referencing from the wasteboard for both sides. Uh, and I'm going to be starting from the bottom left corner of my design and I will be flipping along the Y axis. And again, uh, you can, you know, set it up to fit your needs in your machine. If you do get a copy of these files, because I will make the files available in the description of the video. And speaking of its description of the video, there was a project two weeks ago, the plant stands, the plant stand projects files, are not in the video description yet. And I will make sure that I get them in there for you, for those of you that, that were looking for that and everything. Um, I did not get those plant stand and I wanted to make some changes in it and then I'll make them available for download. They'll be in the uh, video description. So uh, uh, shout out to everyone. Uh, I really appreciate you. I really do uh, coming out uh, and hanging out with me tonight. All right, real quick before we get into this, uh, let me minimize this so you can kind of see me a bit. Um, I've got a rough design on the layout. And basically, uh, these parts, when they fit together, like if you were to package them up or box them up, they should somewhat be able to kind of flip on each other if you turned it 180 degrees. Uh, and, um, you know, but they're not you know, symmetrical on each side. We do have an offset here. This is kind of the home base for this particular player's rail, if you will. And um, uh, let's, uh, we're not going to draw in the uh, Marvel places yet, but let me talk to you a little bit about this game, poker and, not poker. <laughs> Marvels and, Oh my goodness, did I forget the name already? Marbles and Jokers or Pegs and Jokers or uh, Marbles and Cards and you can play with it. But let's talk about a little bit about um, what 
the uh, premise is, is um, there are up to eight players, you know, two, four, six, or eight players. Uh, each player um, is it's like as a six player game or what have you. Um, each player will have uh, five marbles uh, in their home base. And the object is, is by drawing cards, uh, each cards, each set of cards means something different. And the object is to race around the track with your marbles and try to get them home. And the uh, first one to get all five marbles home wins. Uh, and um, yeah, so to uh, make things easier, I'm going to provide like the instructions uh, and everything with the files in the zip file that's going to be downloaded. And um, <clears throat> uh, I'll make those available to you and stuff. But let's uh, go from there. And I'm looking at some questions here. I'm losing my marbles. Thanks, George. That's exactly it. Uh, and, uh, William says, just a curious, are the project files no longer being placed in the file section, of the DWC face group? They are for the most part, uh, William, but I have not posted any up there. Uh, recently I've been putting them in the descriptions of the spindle TV videos for download, but, uh, I will, um, you know, throw, throw them over there as well. But if you want them right away, uh, you can just click on the description of the video uh, within a you know a day or so after the video is aired, and they'll be there. But I have not posted them in the Facebook group uh, recently, but I'll uh, I'll go back and throw them in there for everybody that's in the Digital Woodcarver Owners Group. And the Digital Woodcarver Owners Group is a private group just for digital woodcarver CNC machine owners, guys and girls. Uh, for those of you that aren't owners and stuff, okay. So. Let's get back into it. What we've got is if I can if I can do this properly, let me draw a circle here and I want that circle to be 1.6875 uh, inches in diameter. And let's see if I can snap this down to the center here. And if I can hold down my control key and snap it over here to the center here. And if I took this object and grouped it together for a moment, um, essentially let's hold down our, I'm going to grab this center here and let's hold down our control key and let's snap this roughly to here. Hmm. And uh, let's get that pivot point roughly on the center of this circle and pivot this up. So imagine four of these pieces uh, linked together and I'll, you know, we'll do a much better job of getting things linked up here. Uh, let's see here if I can move that pivot point out of the way. Actually, let me come back here to where I was. And let's get this lined up a little bit better, Lenny. Grab the. Snap that. There we go. That looks prettier. Uh, then I can take my pivot point. That little round circle right there and I can pivot it. I can snap to the center of that circle. And now I can pivot this. I'm just going to use my zero key pivot this 90 degrees. Um, and if I were to take both of these objects, hold down my control key or uh, yeah, my control key and drag a copy off here. If I rotate this around this way, I can grab it here and snap it back down. And so this would be the configuration for a four person game, right? Two person game would probably be just one uh, L shaped rail. Four person game, they would be linked together. And a six person game, da -da -da -da. let's see if I can do that. Let's go ahead and uh, hold down the control key. 
drag this out to the side. Let's take, hmm, let me see here. Let's move over to the side. We'll leave that as a four person game. Let me see here. Let me grab this pivot point. We'll get her laid out here in a minute. Um, click on that middle square that'll give you your pivot point. And oh, let's try that again. And then I can drag that pivot point and I'm going to snap to the center of that circle. And so we're at uh, zero degrees. So if I, I believe it would be 30 degrees. So if I go start to turn this and type in 30 and hit enter. Oh, it should have been the other way around. Control Z. I wonder if negative 30 works. Let's try negative 30. Negative 30, enter. There we go. All right. And then if I took both of these guys here, double click on them, hold down. I'm going to grab it right in the middle right there. Hold down my control key. I should be able to... Well, that didn't work out. Let me grab my control key and pull that out. There we go. Uh, if you let go of your control key before you let go of your mouse key, it's not going to work. Uh, let's move over here. And let's say here, let's, let's grab this guy and snap him. First of all, let's rotate him. That'll be close enough. We'll snap him there. Oops, is he not centered? No, he's not centered. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to grab my pivot point so I can snap. Oh, man, you're so off there, dude. Close enough. All right, let's um, grab this pivot point and snap it there. And let's see if we can rotate this guy around a little bit more uniformly. Wait a minute. I need to be at 30 degrees. So let me get it 90 first. Close enough. And then if I pull it back down and go 30, that'll get me there. <gasps> We're getting somewhere. All right, let's hold down my control key. Let's grab that center there. Use my power there. Snap that to that. And then I should, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I should be able to just put my pivot point down there and rotate. And if I'm good, uh, I'm off just by a little because probably of that pivot point there. But anyway, that would be the uh, six player configuration. And then, of course, we could do an eight player. You guys get the idea. Um, <clears throat> go up from 30 from zero. There you go. That's what Mark, Mark's like. Go up from 30, man. It needs to be 60. Uh, so that would be the six figure. You had a four six figure configuration, six figure configuration. And then you could add uh, two more parts in there. I believe what would that what would that be if it's 30 it'd be 15 degree angle uh that the parts would be at and um they would snap together with uh like almost a mortise and tenon so we're gonna lay this out uh i'm gonna you're gonna see a bunch of undos here happen Woo! boom okay let's get back to square one all right and so basically uh, this part overall is 14 inches in its, uh, length, uh, from one end to the other. And let's see if I can make my text height a little taller. Let's go 1.5 inches there. Ooh, that's big. Uh, it's roughly 14 inches in length and roughly around 
I'm off. It's about three, a little over three inches tall, you know, so three inches tall um, and everything. Okay. And uh, makes a nice little fun little game that can get packed away and stuff. All right. So what we've got going on here is let me get rid of these circles and everything. And basically, if I were drawing this from scratch uh, to give you an idea how I got to this part, because you're like, well, Lainey, that's all good and well. I know we're going to get the files, but man, how'd you get to that part to begin with? Um, I started out with a rectangle that was 14 inches in length, 13 inches in height, or not 13 inches, <laughs> three inches in height. Um, and that kind of gave me my base. Uh, from there, uh, my circles uh, were one and uh, five eighths of an inch, if you will. Um, and if I find my center here, I can draw a center line right there just to kind of break that up. And what I did was uh, basically kind of get my circles aligned up, aligned up. Uh, to where I'm kissing both the corner edges. Um, now, if I wasn't so uh, goofy, I could simply put a fillet in it, right? Uh, so a fillet is the radius of my diameter. If my diameter is 1.6875, I can divide that by two and hit the equal sign right in my box. And I can do a normal fillet and I could just fill it that right to get that round edge and uh, you know I could do the same thing over here but um, you know however you know you want to get to it uh, in the case of this here I can kind of grab the center of this radius and pretty much uh, come in and snap it to the center of that radius there and then I should be able to, if I'm good enough, I should be able to hold down my shift key and select that line and mirror that part by flipping it about the line right to the other side. Okay. And uh, Jeff says, uh, he asked a question um, and says, uh, where did you get the pivot tool or pivot point? All right. So if you have an object, and you select on that ob object and you double click it and put it in transform mode. Your middle square is not only, you know, for dragging around by the center, but if you single click on that middle square, your pivot point will present itself. And that pivot point, then you can hold down your left mouse button and you can drag it anywhere. Uh, and you can pivot off of that pivot point. Um, and by default, it's in the center. And um, if we were to look at the rotate tool over here, you know, the pivot points in the center, right? The center of my object. And I can pivot from, you know, the left corner, the right corners, you know, and things or from the center. Or I could use a certain coordinate if I needed to pivot off of a certain coordinate based on my map i could use that as well and i could type in an actual angle you know absolute or, or you know relative uh and um you know let's say if i wanted to pivot that circle off the center of this line um then now i'm pivoting around the center of that line you know and things so uh just single click on the center of an object uh that is selected or, or put into transform mode by double clicking on it and then single click on that center block and it will present the pivot point for you. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. All right. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now, um, roughly from this position, roughly from this position, you know, in looking at how the board lays out and everything, um, the design, this is kind of, you know, you can you can look at this game up online and this is kind of the basic body style of, uh, of, of the game uh, because of the way it connects and, and everything. But uh, what I did was um, 
I basically took my circle here and if I hold down my control key and drag down a copy roughly I'm a little off but roughly I'm about the same diameter here uh, and I'm a little bit more of a sweep here you know not exactly the same here uh, but close enough it kind of gets me where I want to go so if I take my object here and I kind of snap it there kind of starts giving me that s curve right here if we if we were to draw it out that s curve all the way around and everything now from here it basically kind of comes up and there's a radius and we can pretty much almost use the same diameter the the, the arcs are not quite the same but i mean we could literally kind of get you know close uh in things and so if i basically took oop, put that there hold down my control key and drag a copy off there um if i came in and grabbed the side here and roughly started well not the side <laughs> um would you stop playing around with me Let's get it right up there. Roughly kind of kissing. Oop, I double, not even kissing. Uh, roughly kind of kissing that shape. Right? I could, you know, uh, with my overlaps and everything, if I've got my overlaps and all, I can kind of start uh, trimming uh, this out to create that shape. Okay? You with me? Everybody with me. All right. Hey, welcome, Dave Garvick. Glad you could make it. Um, now, as it kind of rounds off, and we, we, we overshot it a little bit. It kind of straightens out there. We missed our arc, so I could take my scissor tool and kind of trim that off and where it kind of flattens out across the top. And then roughly um, the same, you know, depending on – how much of a uh, straightaway I want to go here um, in my board link. I want to make sure that I have enough room for five marbles on this cross here. Another nine, then the marbles, by the way, are nine sixteenths in diameter. So let's, let's uh, draw that out. Um, So the marbles are roughly this in diameter and we're just creating small pockets for that uh, marble to kind of sit in uh, not you know it's just the butt end of it's going to sit in it so what I normally do is I come in here and uh, kind of get the, the the radius of that which if I could divide it by two and click apply and that's going to kind of be my little marble hole and everything and what my goal is, is to have five marbles uh, here, um, a marble that basically indicates the color of my players. And then this is going to be my home where I can bring five marbles home to and stuff. And so figuring out, you know, how much room I have and um, uh, need and everything kind of basically tells me where I want to just curve this here. And also at the same time, I also want to make sure that when these parts make their way around in eight, six, four configurations that they uh, hit each other. So let's say that I come in here with my line tool and my line is just if i let me grab a guideline first to lay this out for you so roughly my guideline is not at the bottom of this arc um if i were at the bottom of the arc i'd be right about here and that's you know that's probably fine that's what i'd be bringing this down to and over and everything but if i were to bring a guideline to what i drew and let me see if I can snap to my guideline there. You can see that I'm just roughly below. And uh, th there's no 
you know, I didn't pick a, I didn't say, you know, I want to be a quarter inch below, you know, nine sixteenths or anything. I just kind of, you know, something below to give me a little bit of a different shape. So if I drag this guideline down just a little bit, you know, then that's going to kind of give me my straight line. And then uh, let's get rid of this guideline and let's get rid of all my other guidelines. By the way, to get the guidelines, you can uh, drag them from your rulers. You just put your mouse in your ruler and you can drag them. And once you have your guidelines laid out, you can turn the visibility of the guidelines on or off with this little square here in the corner so that you can hide them, but they would still be where you need to be and everything um, and all. And so let's, uh, let's bring our guideline back down here and I'm roughly going to snap right about there. And that's going to give me a place to draw my straight line. Just going to kind of draw it here. I don't need to go all the way over. And with that, I'll go ahead and where'd my line go? There's my line. <laughs> All right. So uh, now from here, I can, you know, if I wanted to, I can kind of start getting, start getting my shape together. It would help if you uh, um, overlap your line a little bit. <laughs> um, but then I can, you know, I can kind of start uh, finessing my shape. And if I wanted to, I'd take my little fillet tool and um, I'd come in and put a small 16th inch radius or kind of whatever radius my bit I'm going to use just to give me a nice little curvature to that and everything. And I'm not going to trim this line up yet because I got to bring this down. And so um, if I take my one and five eighths inch circle again, 1.6, or I'm sorry, uh, one and nine, um, eight, seven, five, that would be one and 11 sixteenths, one 11 sixteenths uh, circle. I can roughly kind of start to uh, play around where, you know, I'm going to be transitioning into that straight away. And once I had this laid out, then it came down to taking my cross and I'll take my marble and I'll show you what I did. I basically took my marble my little uh, half radius marble there. And I, I snapped one on each of the points of this cross here. So if I hold down my control key, I can drag and snap one here, hold down my control key, snap one here, hold down my control, hold down my control key and snap one here. And I'm grabbing the circle by the center uh, and snapping here. And that's kind of my five starter positions, you know, on, on my uh, marbles. And then out here in the middle field, this marble here would be kind of indicating my player colors. So I'd have, if I was yellow or whatever, I would, you know, have a one there and it just stays there. And then over here, I'll just borrow a copy of this one. Uh, basically, I've kind of got my um, points here and there's one right in the middle and there that's going to be where I'm going to be drilling the holes here and basically what I'm wanting is that uh, these guys are somewhat kind of positioned centered and I just eyeballed it you know when I was drawing it in um, and then that kind of told me where I want to start curving this part. And so if I took a copy of this, if I took, oops, if I took a copy of this, hold down my control key and drug it up here. Kind of positioned it right about there. Then that would if I get out of my tool here, that would roughly show me where I want to kind of start uh, transitioning in. And so I just basically kind of move this over 
and uh, I'm going to use my arc tool and I'm going to kind of transition from here to roughly here and uh, just it's not it's not like you know a true arc and it doesn't have to be uniform or anything but I want to start kind of transitioning down and if I were to take my scissor tool uh, and you know trim this away and then I could trim this away and that's how I end up with um, and I got an overlap here you see my overlap you see that pink line that nice white pink dotted line turns into a black line there's some overlap there if I come in here and go into node editing you can see at the center point the center of my circle is kind of snapped there and I'll, so if I insert a point right here and I delete this span, that will remove that overlap for me. Uh, and that will leave me this little bit right here, which is just, it's not connected to anything. It's just a string by itself and I can delete that. And so, whoa. All right, let's, let's reconfigure that one. All right, now I'm a little off on my curve right there. My two circles must have been off. So I'm just going to go into node editing mode. And I'm literally just going to bring this one back a little bit, snap it to there. And I should be able to now join, join tool. I should be able to join those parts. And it's still an open part um, because it's not connected to the rest here. I've got this overlap over here, and I, I must not have done very good at all with my circles. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I can, I should be able to simply, let's try the scissor tool, and let's see if I can trim away or if that just causes me more headache than anything. All right, so trimming away <clears throat> gave me these scrap pieces, and I'll move them up so you can see. And so I just want to delete them. What I want to see is... You know, what I'm looking at this is a nice white dotted line, you know, pink and white dotted line. I don't want any black behind it. And where I, you know, um, where I connect or where I overlap, uh, then I need to, you know, kind of trim away, you know, on the transitions and stuff. So now I should have a closed vector. And that kind of just gives me uh, that uh, layout. Now I'm a little... Notice how we got a heavy pink area right here. And if we zoom in, we can see our, you know, our discrepancy and stuff. So I'm just going to come in with my scissor tool and trim that away. Now I've got a hard point right here. And so if I go into node editing mode on this, um, if I smooth this out, it's going to kind of curve it like that and, and smooth it out. And if I need to adjust it, I can, but that'll kind of get rid of that hard point. And that's how I ended up here. And notice that my second piece is not exactly the same as my first piece. You know, um, it just all depends on what we're going for. If you notice, I'm much wider here. And the reason why I'm much wider here is because I got gameplay marbles. I got a raceway coming through here, you know, that's going to be going around. And so I really kind of need to think about that here as well. Um, you know, I want a nice fat area. So if I would have used a little bit smaller radius circle on this, I would have ended up, you know, probably a little bit better off. But I can recover from that. We can go back into node editing mode. And I'm simply going to uh, come into here at this arc and I'm going to delete that span i'll just cut myself loose from there and i'm going to take these nodes here and i should be able to kind of start bringing this up until i get you know kind of that thickness that i want and um let's bring a guideline down let's see if we can Bring a guideline down to help us. I'll, I'll go ahead and snap to there. And then what I can do is with my nodes, I can just kind of bring them up in the line. Once I, I have that, I will, 
let's turn the guidelines off so you can see. I'll just use my extend tool and extend this over and use my trim tool, my scissors to just clean that. <laughs> Zoom in. Oh, you. If your trim tool doesn't work for you, go into node editing mode and bring this guy a little bit past. Just click on that node, bring it a little bit past the line and clean it up. And so over here, you know, I want a little bit more uh, gradual curve and I might, you know, even here as well. <clears throat> and that's where you, it becomes, I'm not anal or anything, <laughs> but you know, that's where it becomes uh, kind of, uh, you know, how I want the flow. So in this case, I would eliminate this point. Okay. That'll give me these two points here that I can kind of finesse my corner a little bit, you know, get rid of that extra node. Over here, I can come over here and get rid of this node. And I can kind of start to finesse this corner a bit until I'm happy with the shape. And that's how I ended up, you know, uh, with that, you know, that piece. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me, Lord of mercy. Um, let's go ahead and take this, get out of node editing mode. Uh, let's take this part here and let's just move it off to the side for a moment. And let's kind of come back here a bit. I don't know. Which one do I like better? Which one looks better? Now that I'm looking at it, which one looks better? Um... I like this one. I don't know why, but I do. All right. So we got our part. Now in here, somewhere in the middle is going to be a raceway um, for marbles. And then the marble raceway has got to kind of turn the track um, and everything. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of... Uh, Let's say that, let's say that uh, it really helps with my marble layout. Let me grab one of my marbles here. Hold down my control key. And let me drag one over here. So basically, I'd have a marble here and then one probably somewhere down there. So I can put my line from the center of that and snap it to there. Space bar to finish. And... Um, Let's see what I do over here. I'm a little bit more angled. So let's take this. Watch this now. Control key. Select both of those. Click on that center point. Drag that pivot point to here. And then I can kind of change my angle. And I can also change you know, about where I want it, right? Nifty little trick with that pivot point. All right. Hopefully I'm not putting you guys and girls to sleep and you're following along okay. Um, now, the same thing over here. The only thing is, is there's going to be two marbles that kind of go here. And the raceway kind of, uh, if you will, steps down and, and then around. And uh, it's just because of the way that this uh, side is kind of positioned. And so I just need to be mindful of that. If I take one of my marbles, which we're going to be laying out these marbles here in just a moment, uh, and kind of right about here and hold down that control key and drag one roughly right about here, hold down the control key, not the shift key right about there. Uh, that kind of gives me the point where I can take and, you know, I've got my lines. Now, I don't need the center lines here. If I've got the marbles there, I don't need the center lines. But it kind of gets me 
where I, where, you know, where I, where I want to be and where I need to be and stuff and everything. And, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the object now is, is to basically get my row of marbles running across here. Sorry about that. Uh, to get my row of marbles and my holes and everything aligned. And I can use the uh, copy along vector tool, um, if I will. But the first thing is, is I need to know um, how many marbles that I'm going to uh, be using. And um, the... the there's no it's basically it's a comfortable amount of spacing you know it uh it, there, there's no rhyme or reason or anything uh let me see here i can probably I don't know if the, I, I haven't looked at like uh, like like Wikipedia it and see if there's a certain amount per player, but uh, I'm going to do 17 across and it should give me 18, 19, 20, 21 marbles um, going across the bottom and down. So uh, I should have one, two, 17 across and then two, you know, angled this way. And that should give me a total of 21 on each rail and again that's my guesstimation uh, i believe that is correct but though so if i come in here and i take and hold down the control i keep forgetting to hold that control key down that's where my two are going to go here and then now i need 17 across uh this this line if you will and so the um, spacing, if I go into my tool here, I should be able to select that circle, select my line, and copy objects. Oops. Hold your shift key this time, Lane copy my objects and I should be able to number of copies 17 and um, you know if I reverse the direction it should bring me 17 back that way and it throws one right on the end so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen 18. Did I just count that wrong? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So number 17 is actually going to land on the middle there. So what I need to do <clears throat> is I need to shift things a little bit. I need to shift things a little bit. So let's take this guy and move him up a little. Not too close. Roughly there. And then take my line and marbles. Roughly, I got to remember, I've got this is a small diameter. Imagine my marbles. It's all about the spacing. Let me draw out a full shape marble, which is nine sixteenths. Nine sixteenths hit the equal sign, and that's what a full size of my marble looks like. Like. 
Man, Lane, there's no way you're getting 17 across there. Let me see here. If I center that up there, and then got to have two in this edge. That's crazy. All right, control key, let's snap one here. Control key, snap one here. All right, these, that's why this is lower. I got to rotate this a little bit differently. And let me shift it over a bit. That's why this one's a little bit lower. Always wondered why that was. Okay. Over here. And once well, the great thing about it is once we get one laid out, it's done. All the other pieces are the same. Um, we can go ahead and drag this. I'm going to hold my control key down. Drag this over here. Snap that there. And hold the control key down and snap to the end of that. And first things first, this, 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 and this. If I would hold the right key, let's tilt that a bit. And let me shorten things up. I'm saying you, I'm thinking use smaller marbles, man. Jeez Louise. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So that's not going to work out the way I want it to work out. I need, I need to change my spacing. I know what I did wrong. I know what I did wrong. I'm spacing the wrong size. Um, hold on a minute. Let me delete this. Let me select all of these and let's do that again. Let's grab our, our actual marble here and our line. Come back in here. I want 17 across. That'll give me my spacing on those 17. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. Maybe it's twenty. Maybe it's twenty pieces and not twenty-one per player. Oh shoot! Hold on, ladies and folks. Let me uh, see if I. <laughs> I should have read the rules of the game. Um, give me two seconds here. Let me let me see if I can. Um, Confusion, delusion. Okay. Let me look at here. Every player gets uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Or actually, it's uh, nineteen. Nineteen. Because 20 and 21 are on the other piece or over here. They count this as 20. All right. I knew something wasn't seeming so right. So 19. So actually on this side, those are gone. They don't belong there. This is 
going to I'm going to have a I'm going to have this part over here. Hold on, I got to do this right now or I'll screw you guys up. 1.6875. I need to snap to the center of the circle here. That's going to be the overlap of that piece. That's my mortise and tenon where the two the, my half lap if you will where the two parts snap together. Can't have a marble there, right? So I need 19. So we'll delete this one. Let's bring this line back to here. And now I should have 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> ah! 18, 19. What the hell? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, I got to fit two more in there somewhere. Holy camoly. Looks like 18 total per piece. Someone says 18 total per piece. Um, uh, let's, let's, I would, I would, I wouldn't mind that at all. I'm looking, I'm looking it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen is the magic number. Thank you, Mark. Mark jumped in and said, Hey man, thanks. It's eighteen pieces, not nineteen, not twenty, not twenty-one. It is eighteen, Laney. Eighteen, buddy row. All right, so. That's wonderful because that means that I can snap this back over to uh, here. I can take my line and I can shift it over just a little bit. Not much. Basically, let me get this first marble started. So roughly right about there because these are these are the marbles and uh, everything roughly right about there. And then I can take my line and... Uh, snap it to the center of that circle there all of these can get deleted delight delete um i've got those two marbles here let's bring this one back a bit bring my line back a bit let me see control key snap there let's bring it back a little bit more I'd be comfortable right about there. So let's bring this line back and snap it right to that corner. All right. So that's going to be good. So let's get rid of that circle there. Select this one. Hold down the shift key. Come in here and let's go 18 pieces. All total. Don't steer me wrong. And there we go. Okay, now each of these circles, um, I got a du uh, duplicate over here. Let's delete that one. Uh, each of these circles, they're going to get narrowed down to half this size uh, because, like I said, the marbles are just going to kind of rest in those pockets and everything. So um, it's just going to rest in those pockets and stuff. And uh, thank you, Mark, for that. I appreciate you uh, and everything. There you go. Um, and so let's go ahead and let's get these down to size. Uh, and basically all I'm going to do with my size tool and everything, I've got uh, the marble diameter here. I'm just going to divide it by two. And uh, that's going to give me, you know, each of these. Now, you guys get the uh, point on this. You probably, oops, um, you probably don't need me to see me redo that. So the easy way, you know, if I wanted to, I could just divide those all by two without drawing them again. But the easy way for me to do it is to divide by two equals and create a circle and snap it 
to the center of each of these. As long as I got my smart snapping and geometry snapping in, I can come in and snap to the center of each of these uh, one by one. Let's get these last uh, five. So when your mouse moves over the center, you'll get that little crosshair with the with the circle with a little dot, black dot in the middle. And that means you're snapped to the center of the object. And then from there, I can come in and if I draw from right to left, if I draw a selection box from right to left and just have it touch the larger circles, it'll just select the larger circles and I can delete those out. All right. And um, I can, you know, snap this and this here. And then I'll just uh, delete these two. And so that will, you know, be my layout for the game piece. Yay. Okay. Holy camoly. All right. So now that I've got this layout here and everything, now I need to start thinking about how the parts are going to get cut. Because on side two, there's going to be a cut here. And on here, there's going to be a cut. And I got to figure out how big I want my, you know, tenons and my pockets and stuff. Because this is going to be milled down to a half lap down here. And uh, let's we'll, we'll create the tool pass for one of these parts to show you. Uh, but I would probably say that um, maybe, you know, for sturdiness and everything, maybe a half inch diameter would be good. Half inch diameter for that little uh, peg that's going to be milled there. And so um, we'll throw one there as well. Now that's not going to stay there. It's going to be on side two, but I'm about to take this object here and this object here and copy it. Copy to other side and that'll copy it for me based on the way I'm flipping. If we look at side two, you know, there's my, my other side. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. All right. So let's create a tool path on this. And um, then uh, we'll, we'll see, you know, kind of how that part's uh, going to, you know, come out. Let's go over here. And I'm going to do my pocket cut first. So it's going to, my piece is three quarters of an inch. And so I'm going to go uh, three eighths. 0.375. Uh, and I'm going to take my <clears throat> circle here and this, and that's going to be my parameters for my pocket toolpath. I'll use my quarter inch end mill, and this will be my um, pocket. Side one. I'm going to, I'm going to copy this across my board so I can cut more than one piece out and everything, but I just want to kind of get a, a fill for this uh, 0.25 in mil and calculate that. All right. And uh, preview that selected tool path and that'll give me that part there. Let's take my profile cut. We'll do a profile tool path, cutting all, I like to cut all the way or halfway through on one side, halfway through on the other on a, uh, so it puts my tabs in the middle of the part on a piece, but I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to uh, go all the way through just for demonstration purposes and stuff. And I'll use a quarter inch end mill on the outside of the cut. And uh, I'm not going to put tabs in this. This is just for preview. And let me preview this tool path. <clears throat> okay. 
Now, what I want to look at is you see these fuzzies and everything around here and also right here. I need to make the diameter of this circle a little bit bigger. One, because the other part, which is the same diameter, of this has to be able to fit comfortably in here. And uh, it needs to be able to uh, spin and pivot and things, you know, when the two parts are in. So what I'm going to do is in my pocket cut on this pocket cut here, I'm going to give myself an allowance. I'm going to give an allowance of a negative allowance. That means I'm going over the line and I'm just going to go probably. Um, uh, I want it to be kind of a nice fit together. So uh, I'll give myself a. Maybe a 20 thousandths of an inch allowance, uh, 10 to 20 thousandths of an inch allowance. And um, because I want uh, to basically open up that piece, I want a nice clean air. Let's move this up where everybody can see. And let's zoom in on it. And let's turn off that global fill color there for a minute. And so basically I've got this part that the other piece, which is going to be my pocket on the other side, is going to fit on there for all those game pieces all the way around. It's going to create that interlocking system, if you will, uh, and everything. And then, you know, on the marble holes, the marble holes, uh, I don't need my lines. Again, we don't need the raceway lines. They're just there for layout uh, and everything. I'll move him over a little bit. There we go. All right, one more time. Let me circle, select those, and I'm just going to turn off, uh, hold down my shift key and deselect my layout lines here. I don't need those. Now, these, they're going to be a drilling operation or a pocket cut, uh, but I'd prefer, because they're marbles, I need a rounded bottom. And so I would prefer to use like a box core router bit. Uh, and, you know, um, I would probably, it all depends on how, how deep I need to go for where that would sit in there and everything. And it also depends on the, the box core bit that I have. Um, you know, I've got, I know I've got a three eighths inch radius box core bit uh, for me. Um, which would be, I think it'd be down in my form tools here. I've got a quarter inch radius box core bit and I've got a three inch radius box core bit and my holes, my holes are roughly a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, you know? And um, they're about 0.3. So if I took my 3 8 inch radius box core bit and go into node editing mode and cut it in half, cut the vector there. Cut the vector there and um, delete that top part to kind of represent my box core bit. If I take a straight line here, basically the diameter that I'm looking for is about that 0.28. You know, that's kind of my, my magic number that I'm looking to hit is that 0.2813. Okay. And so roughly, if I were to measure, let's say straight across at this point. Oh, let's make my number smaller now. You know.
How can a three eighths inch radius box score bit give me a point four? Did I do three? I'm such an idiot. Hold on a minute there, Hollis. Um, what's my size here? <laughs> Let's try that again there, buddy Row. That's more better. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That's a big bit. All right, let's snap that back down there and let's measure again here. I was about to say, what? Um, let's say I cut, you know, this deep. All right, so I'm about 0.21 there. Uh, let's go up a little bit higher. Straight across. That's a quarter of an inch. A little bit higher. I usually would draw guidelines so I know where I've measured. 0.30. Okay. So I'm roughly going to um, be right about, let me zoom in here. You gonna let me snap to you there, buddy? Let me go into node editing mode. So it's either wanting to snap here or when I come down, it's wanting to snap to that, you know, that point there. <clears throat> I'm gonna insert a point right here so I can snap down to it. I'm also gonna come right about here and insert a point so I can snap to that. And once again, uh, let me just take a quick measurement and see where I'm at. So if I were to measure across this line, two nine, okay, I can deal with that. I can kind of work that. So what does that tell me? That tells me, you know, like when I cut down this deep, that's going to give me that radius here. And how tall is that? You know, so if I go vertically that's this is going to tell me my depth of cut 0.072 so i would probably go maybe 0.068 or something you know if i wanted to really hit that 0.28 radius but 0.072 that'll bring me to a you know a uh, 0.29 i believe it was and everything and i'll be happy with that so i can use my 3 8 box core bit to create those divots those those divots and so uh knowing that and that was a long way around you guys know a shorter way to do that let me know um but uh yeah so that kind of gives me my my depth of cut so i'll go 0.07 i'll just round it down 0.07 and i'll use my 3 8 box core bit My three eighths radius does not have a. What am I thinking? Of? Am I thinking of my point one eight seven five that has a three eighths inch diameter? Yeah, I am. Hold on a minute, there, folks. You're about to see how to add a form tool to your router bait tool base. Uh, I'm going to select that vector right there, and let's go down here and close this for a minute. I'm going to select that vector right there and I'm going to go into my tool database and uh, I'm going to go in my Imperial tools. I'm going to go down to my form tools here and select that category and click new form tool. Oh, hold on. I got to cut it in half. See there, I'm getting ahead of myself. Bear with me a second. Note editing. Cut the vector. Delete that right half for a moment. All right. Let me go back in here. Imperial tools. Let me go to my form tools. This is what you get for, for doing things on the fly. All right. Let's go ahead and select our form tool. And uh, 3 8 inch diameter. That's much better. Uh, this is a, I guess you would consider it a one flute. 
uh, all the way around, um, and uh, create the settings for it. My pass depth, uh, I'll just make my pass depth a sixteenth of an inch per pass. It'll give me, a, it'll do a little cleanup cut. And uh, 55 and 20 is fine for that. So let's go 18,000. All right. One more time on my drilling operation. Turn off all my guidelines here and select all my circles. Get out of node editing mode. So I don't make you guys, what in the hell is he doing? All right. Turn off my guidelines. I'm holding the shift key down and selecting on them. 0.07 cut depth. Uh, I'm not going to use pecking because uh, it's going to go just a little lower than its past depth. This is going to be my game holes. 0.375 diameter, which is an 18, uh, 36, um, uh, 316 inch radius, um, diameter box core. Calculate those up. I got one open vector selected. Do I have a line selected? Oh, way up here. Turn that off. Calculate that out. Preview my selected toolpath. And let's get out of this oak. I like uh, maple so you all can see it nice and clear. Um, and that will be my, my game parts. They don't look too rounded, do they? What bit did I choose? How about we choose my end mill, my form tool that I just created? I got to rename it. And let me select that. Let's redo that. Calculate. That's better. All right. Have I put you to sleep yet, guys? Wake up. That's all right. We almost made some beer drinking games, uh, wooden beer drinking games for, for like pubs and man caves and women caves and stuff. But I thought that would be inappropriate. Um, so that would be my game part. Now, we could dress this up a little bit. Um, we could, you know, put our race lines in there and do a nice little V cut. So it just doesn't, let's, let's look at this in its uh, entirety here. You know, <clears throat> we could, uh, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it could use a little bit of decoration, huh? We might even, you know, we could probably even put like player one here or something, but then that would be, you know, we don't want to label it. You know, we could do something. Um, let's, uh, let's take and let's do this. Let me see what it would look like. Let's grab our guidelines. Let's grab our guidelines and let's do a profile cut. Anytime you're following a single line, it's a profile cut. Let's go just a sixteenth of an inch deep. Uh, let's go with a... 60 degree V bit will be fine. Let's go 60 on the line. And let's calculate that out. <clears throat> let's preview that. I don't know. Does it does it does it do anything for it? What do you think? You guys give me your opinion. 
uh, you know, let's uh, let's give it a little color. You know, we might even be, you know, creative and paint it the same colors of the marbles. But then again, that limits, you know, where the marbles and the players sit. They have to sit at that color. I don't know. Uh, what do you think? All right. And so uh, let's stop here for just a second and answer some questions. Um, let's see here. James Stewart, is there a tool to select all circles if of that size and change them all at the same time? I wish. No, um, there is not. So uh, in our selection options, we can select all vectors, all open vectors, duplicate vectors, all vectors on a current layer. So if we put all of our circles on a layer, we could. Um and, uh, you know, on our vector selector here, um, we could do, uh, we could do this right here. So all closed vectors, only circles. Oh, wait a minute. Are you saying, isn't there, isn't there a tool? He, did, he didn't, he didn't ask, is there, he said, isn't there a tool? And yes, James, there is. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, so let's, but now let's see if, um, let's see if we can change them at the same time. So if we select all the circles, only circles, uh, circles matching my, um, nine sixteenths by by two. And on layer one, or layer five, I'm on layer five, so I might as well use layer five. There's 20 objects. Close. Let's do that again. Hold on a minute. Select, selector, vector selector, all closed vectors, only circles matching the circle diameter, which is, uh, once again, uh, I should have remembered the number, 9 16 divided by 2. Uh, circle tolerance, we'll give it a 4 thousandths. Um, I believe my, you know, I'm all in all layers, but, you know, I'll just select all my layers that are turned on. But I think it's layer 5 because that's what I'm drawing in. But what the hell? Let's see here. I'm going to move this to the side, and there you go. So it's selected them all. That's good. Let me see what layer they're on. Yeah, okay. I figured they were on somewhere on different ones. All right. So, yes, James Stewart, thank you for pointing that out. I never knew that was there. Can you believe that? Five years in the making. I never knew that was there. That's cool. All right. So we've got the circle selected. Now let's see if we can change their size. All together. Okay. We can do this. We could do this. We could do this using the box method. Bear with me. Bear with me. If I go 200% on this, it's going to, you know, Hold on a minute. Let's uh if I go two hundred percent on this, that should change the diameter by 
the radius by twice, it should give me a 9 16 inch diameter. Which uh, was pretty close, five six two four, and what is uh, nine sixteenths again? Five six two five. So that's one method of doing it. You know, basically using the percentage box. So there is a way to do that. You know, it changes your layout and all. But so yes, James, there is, isn't there? You're correct. Um, but now CNC nuts, Peter, uh, I believe is I, if I, I hope I don't butcher his last name, Pasquale, Pasquale, um, he's got a method for resizing objects called the box method that, uh, he demonstrated in one of his videos and, um, uh, I wish I could remember exactly how it goes off the top of my head, but. Uh, CNC nuts on YouTube. You guys should check out his videos. Uh, he does some good videos and stuff, but, um, uh, he has a great way of resizing parts for slotted pieces that fit together and everything. And it has to do with drawing a box around the part, uh, and scaling that box based on a, uh, uh, you know, a numeric value. But, um, I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's one of his videos. Um, and maybe if I, I'll research that and then, um, I'll, I'll talk, I'll, 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 we'll do that next week just to see, but definitely check out CNC nuts on YouTube. Um, he's a great guy. Peter's a great guy. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, Mark says, uh, prefer without lines and, uh, and Jeff says, hey, after you make your cuts, uh, can you see if the cut did uh, go to your, you know, desired, you know, depth, cut depth? Yes. Um, let's turn off the color here. And uh, uh, let's reset this. Someone said they preferred it without the lines. So let's reset this and let's take the uh, lines out of the equation. Delete that. And uh, let's preview all the tool paths. And let's get back to here. And Jeff's question is, is, hey, after you simulate a cut, can you go in and see if it did hit your, your cut depth and everything? And yeah, so in your software, uh, if you go to the, if you look at the bottom of the screen, let me move uh, Jeff's comment. Uh, at the bottom of the screen down here, uh, when you hover over your mouse, it's going to show you your Z position. Now, remember, I'm working off the bottom of my material. Okay. So my top of my board is three quarters of an inch from my waste board. So that's why it says 0.75. If you were working off the top of your material, let's say um, uh, zero. And so I can move my mouse uh, into a cut uh, to see you know, if I did hit my depth and everything and, um, you know, roughly where am I at? Let's see here. What's my biggest depth here? Six, eight, seven, seven. Let's go down. I need my smallest depth actually six, eight. Let me find, try to find the center of that circle. So point six, eight. And, um, uh, roughly. And so if we do the math, my board is uh, 0 0.75 minus 0 0.68, uh, roughly 0 0.07, which is the depth that I want it. Okay. So yes, you can move your mouse in there and see that cut. So, okie dokie, okie dokie. All right, so there's my part. So now that I've got my part and everything uh, and got everything laid out and I know my cut depth and all that stuff, now I can kind of come in here and I'm gonna group these uh, together. <clears throat> and uh, let me see if there were any other questions. Um, see the cut depth, I prefer without the lines. Maybe one on each side. 
Well, all right. So Warren says maybe one on each side, like a line on each side, uh, like a railroad track. Um, let me know if that's what you meant, Warren. Um, but, uh, you know, saying maybe a line on each side or something to uh, look like a track and stuff. Um, Troy says if they were grouped, maybe. So probably. Uh, oh, that was Troy was referring to uh, resizing the circles and everything. And so uh, I've got my parts laid out here. And um, what I'm going to do is let me put my circle back in here for a moment. Bear with me a second. My half inch diameter circle. Not half inch radius. Half inch diameter, dude. You can tell it's been a long day. All right, let's get back in there and snap there. All right, so I'm going to take uh, my parts here. And I'm going to start kind of laying them out on my little board here and see how many parts I want to, you know, cut out for each piece. And, you know, I was thinking um, that uh, I was thinking that probably uh, depending on how much gap and everything, uh, I'm going to reverse this. So if I go number nine on my keyboard, um, I can shift this one over I'll have to change my profile lines and everything on the other side I shift this one over this way and shift this one over that way this is what nesting is good for if I made my board a little bit longer let's go instead of because uh, I can make my board any length that I want I can cut it to whatever length that I want let's go 18 inches 18 inches And let's move this one over. Move this one down a bit. Making sure that I get my router bit enough room and everything. Um, take both of these and kind of get them in a position. Let me see. I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill to uh, cut these out. So I can kind of gauge roughly uh, how far apart I want um, my pieces. I want when both pieces get cut out. I don't care that this little area gets overlapped and stuff. Let's uh, snap that to here. And let's take this one and snap it to here. So I have a little bit of skin, but I have all this wood and stuff that will be holding these parts in. So I'm not, I'm actually kind of not worried about that. So what I can do is let's move this over a little closer to the edge. I got to remember where my clamps are and stuff. And I'm going to be using cam clamps. So I can move this over. that down a bit and I should be able to take <clears throat> those two parts and hold down the control key and get two more pieces out of that and so I could do four pieces of maple four pieces of walnut four pieces of cherry four pieces of whatever and so I yeah I can get four pieces out of that and uh, knowing that now, let me flip over to the other side here and let me get rid of this this uh, vector line and stuff because I got to start, um, you know, laying this out. First thing I need to do is I need to put my alignment holes on the board. So I'm going to put my quarter inch diameter alignment holes in, in one of these waste areas and stuff here. So I'm just going to throw uh, two alignment holes there. And uh, I'm going to take my profiles. Let's go ahead and ungroup uh these guys here i'm 
and I don't need those uh, two holes there. And I'm going to take my profile cut. And this circle that's on this edge here at these two marbles. And I'm going to copy oh, and my alignment holes. <clears throat> and I'm going to copy them to the other side. Okay. All right, so now I can start creating my toolpath for side one. So side one, my pocket cuts uh, are going to be uh, these vectors over here and this one here. And I'm going to be cutting three-eighths of an inch deep. That's going to create that tenon uh, and that half lap for me. I'll do an offset cut, giving myself 20 thousandths of an inch allowance so those parts can fit together and pivot and twist and everything. That should be a good allowance and everything. And uh, I'll go ahead and calculate uh, that toolpath. Um, my profile cut is actually going to be cutting three eight. Oops, that was my pocket again. Let's close this. <clears throat> my profile cut, I'm going to be cutting halfway through on one side of the board uh, with my quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line. And I'm going to add tabs uh, to my parts. And my tabs are just going to be a sixteenth of an inch thick on each side, which is going to give me an eighth inch tab in the center of my part. Sixteenth of an inch on side one and a sixteenth of an inch on side two. Um, and um, we can go from there. And so on my tabs, let's go ahead and select all of my profiles here. and edit my tabs and what i want to do is i want to um try to try to avoid curves and, and corners and things uh you know the best i can but i'm kind of close to my edge here that a tab would be absolutely useless uh, a couple of tabs here would be absolutely useless so i'm gonna kind of have to um pick my battle I'll put a tab there. Uh, I'm going to put a tab straight across here that'll kind of reinforce that area there. Um, I'll put a tab straight across from this one to kind of reinforce that area there. I'll throw a tab here and let's actually move them down a bit. We'll come down here a bit, reinforce that area and I'll throw a tab here straight across from one another. We'll throw a set of tabs here tab here and again I'm in the you know that tab here is going to be useless uh, so I'll just again pick my battle on this one and come there uh, but I've got uh, four tabs on this four tabs four tabs three on the two ends and I should be good with that I, I, I'll be happy with that <clears throat> and so we're going to uh, calculate this is going to be side one profile cut with my quarter inch in mill. All right, let's calculate that out. All right, awesome. So uh, that takes care of that one. Let's come back over here. And now this is going to be a useful little thing. Let's... Um, Let's 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 do this. I'm going to select all of my circles here. And I'm going to move them, all those little marble circles. I'm going to move them to a new layer. And I'll just call it my circle layer. Okay. And when I'm creating my game hole toolpath, Cutting 0.07 with my radius and everything, I can come down here and use my vector selector in the toolpath and do the same thing that I just did a moment ago with the other selector. Uh, on my circle layer, I want to associate that layer with the toolpath. 
I want to select all closed vectors, circles only, circles matching uh, the diameter of, once again, 9 sixteenths equals, throw my mouse back on the end, divide that by 2 equals, um, and um, if I move this out of the way, it should select all of those circles right there. Very cool. Uh, click close, and now that makes that toolpath an automatic selection. It's only going to select and create what's on, or you know, select what's on that that layer. Um, and so uh, that made things easy for me. I can calculate that toolpath, and um, and I can preview that uh, selected toolpath. There's those holes. Let's preview all the toolpaths on this side. Now, the main toolpath I haven't made yet, which is my alignment hole toolpath for my project board. That's going to be the first toolpath that gets run. But uh, I just wanted to kind of, I want to look at my tabs and everything and see uh, what's going here. Now, uh, Ronnie Probert says, uh, referring to James' note, could you use the array tool? Um Let's go uh, back up to James. Isn't there a tool to select different circles? I mean, Ronnie, yeah, it's two different things. Uh, uh, James uh, was referring to, you know, since I had these circles drawn out, um, is there a way to select them all and just resize them all? And uh, there is. Um, it's going to change the layout a bit, but it does resize them. Um, the box method... I'm very curious. I wish I, I wish we had time that I could research that, uh, you know, uh, from CNC nuts on YouTube. Cause I watched that video two nights ago and, uh, I wanted to make note of that, but, um, I believe it would actually keep them restricted to where they were. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. Um, but Ronnie, you're talking about using the array tool and that array tool is, it would just be making that copy of arrays of the circles and things. Uh, if I drew one circle and said I need 12, you know, 12 rows of this and 13 rows of that, you know, a half inch apart with a gap of this, uh, it would create that array. So it's a, it's two different things, um, you know, but, you know, good thinking. But we don't unfortunately, we don't have any consistency in the way that these are laid out other than this here, uh, the straight rows. An array tool would work on that, but it's just as easy to use the array uh, copy along vector tool, you know, when we copied it along the line. All right. So this is our parts for side one. Uh, I really hope you guys, one of you guys make this project. These are, this is a fun little game and I'll, I'll put the rules with the files. All right. So are my two, uh, alignment holes, that's going to be a drilling operation for me cutting three eighths of an inch deep. I cut three eighths of an inch through my top of my material with my quarter inch end mill. Um, and I use pecking and um, this is my side one board alignment holes. I don't know why I'm getting in the habit of putting spaces between things. Uh, board alignment holes. And uh, it's a 0.25 in the mill. And when I calculate that, uh, you know, for those alignment holes, I want to be sure that I put that at the top of the list. That's the first toolpath that's going to get run. And now these two toolpaths are all three of these basically toolpaths that use the same bit. Uh, but the profile cut has to be, you know, it can be in any order, I guess, because I'm not cutting all the way through. Uh, in this case, but on side two, it's very important that that profile cuts last. But on side one, if I wanted to change the, you know, save the extra bit change, um, I could uh, come in and do my box core holes first with my three eighths inch bit. And then I could do my board holes, uh, alignment holes, my pocket cuts and everything and my profile cut with my end mill do those all because those will be one file. And then uh, coming back over to uh, side two here, 
I'm actually going to delete these profiles and I'll show you why. Um, if I have profiles that are on one side and they're, you know, I created the toolpath and I've got the tabs in there and everything. Um, I can, if I now take this profile cut or profile uh, vectors, and now I copy them to the other side. It's going to copy the tabs with them. So when I create that toolpath, the tabs will be perfectly aligned with the tabs from side, side one. Um, so I don't have to try to figure out where I had them on side one and stuff. All right. So um, let's take my alignment holes here. Let's copy them to the other side. I've already got everything else. If I flip the side two. I've got my, my hole that's going to get cut here, three-eighths of an inch deep. I've got my profile vectors. I've got my alignment holes. And the one thing that I need to do is I need to create my vector uh, for the um, that half lap, if you will, that, that pocket cut that's going to mill this down. And so I'll just go ahead and... Uh, click on this. It's going to be that uh, 1.6875. And if I snap to the center of the circle, I should be able to snap that there, there. That's the wrong side. Don't do that one. Over here, buddy roll. Here. <coughs> this one's over here. And this one's over here. And so this is going to be, I'm going to do my pocket cut first with these circles that I just drew here. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, they're going to be cut three-eighths of an inch deep with a quarter-inch end mill. So this is going to be my uh, side two. Half lap pocket and 0.25 in mil and calculate that out. Okay, that'll mill that uh, side down. Now I got to give myself an allowance again. I'm going to give myself a little bit of an allowance on this part uh, and everything. Uh, but let's see here. Don't want to give myself an allowance on this. This part's fitting on the other part. I don't really need to give this one an allowance. So I'm good there. But I absolutely need to give myself a little bit of an allowance on this hole here. So these four holes, that's going to be my pocket cut. This one's going to be cutting... Um, Wait, hold on. Let me go back into my 3D view here. All right, that's my peg. The other side is going to be a hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Let me switch back over here. All right, on this, these holes here, these are going to start. Let me think, guys. Let me think here. Uh, they're going to start. I need them a little bit shallower, or I need them a little bit deeper. I need to make my pegs on the other side a little shallower. We got to fix that over on the other side, guys. Uh, let me make this hole. So I'm already milled down three eighths of an inch for that half lap. And then this pocket, uh, I'm going to go, I don't want to go all the way through. So I'm only going to go a quarter of an inch deep. That'll leave me an eighth of an inch of skin. Oh my, my. That'll be fun. Of an inch deep. Starting at three-eighths, 
putting an additional quarter. This is going to be side two. Uh, this is going to be my, I'll call it my tenon. Right. 0.25 mil. Okay, so that'll cut that uh, additional quarter inch uh, tenon in there and everything. <clears throat> Why does that not look right to me, guys and girls? Let's do the let's do the profile toolpath. That doesn't look right to me for some reason. Um, on my 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 methodology, my thinking. Let's create the profile toolpath. Profile cut, cutting three eighths of an inch deep, uh, quarter inch end mill on the outside of the cut. Going to add tabs. See the tabs are already in there, so all I have to do is scroll down, give this a name, side two. Profile cut out 0.25 in mil and calculate that. <clears throat> Preview the visible toolpath. Okay. All right, I do need to give myself an allowance. That's one of the things. So let me go back into the half lap cut. And I'm also going to do a negative 0.02 allowance. I might just give myself a 10 thousandths of allowance on each side, which would be a total of 0.02. I don't want it too sloppy. Um, I don't want it too sloppy. I might, I might just do 10 thousandths of an inch allowance on each side. So it's a nice friction turn. All right. So, um, my backside piece, this side slides over to that peg that's here. And when the two parts fit together, it creates a three quarter inch piece. So my pegs are too tall. They need to be a quarter inch. Um, I can't go three eighths of an inch on that peg here because I had to mill down the backside three eighths. And if I do a three eighths of an inch hole here, it's going to go all the way through. And I don't want to see it all the way through because that hole's on the bottom of my you know, my marbles here. So I need to reduce these pegs down uh, by an eighth of an inch uh, from three eighths to a quarter or a little more because I'm, I only have an eighth of an inch of uh, skin left and I'm cutting my marbles. I got two marbles cutting 0.7 so it only leaves me about a sixteenth of an inch, you know, but I'm not cutting through. I'm not piercing through or anything on this side. So we're good. Everything's cutting normal. No holes or no cut throughs or anything like that. So let's create the pocket for side one. Let's pop up to side one and we got to create that little pocket uh, that's going to mill that tenon down to a quarter of an inch stub um and i might go a little bit more than a quarter you know i might take a little bit more than an eighth so they don't bottom out you know so it doesn't bottom out in the bottom of the pocket so i'm going to select all of these one two three four and i'm going to do use my offset tool and um i'm going to offset this just uh by 
Um, a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, that's good. Oh, let's do this. Offset, uh, uh, outward, a sixteenth of an inch, select new. There we go. Mm -hmm. Outward, not inward. And now I can create that pocket tool path. And this is going to be cutting down. And I'm going to go 0.12. I don't want them to bottom out. So um, 0.129 instead of 125. This is going to be my um, side one. And then reducing pocket. And then reducing pocket. Is that a technical term? Uh, 0.25 in mil. Yep, 0.25 in mil and calculate that. Flip back over to um, side one so y'all can see it. And all that's going to do is that's going to reduce that 3 8 of an inch tenon uh, down an eighth of an inch. Here we go. So it fits into that, or a little more than an eighth of an inch. So it fits into that hole on that side. Okay. Now the uh, crucial thing that I'm missing on this is uh, back on side two is my waste board alignment holes. So I want to go ahead and create that tool path and make sure that that's at the top of the list. So it's a drilling operation and I only cut a quarter of an inch into the waste board. I use half inch long little quarter inch pins, metal pins for my alignment pins. Um, I'm cutting a quarter with a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to use pecking. And this is going to be my waste board alignment holes. 0.25 end mill. <clears throat> and calculate that. Okay, I got duplicates. They're being ignored. That's fine. And uh, let's get that at the top of the list. That's going to be my first tool path. And all these are quarter inch end mills. Uh, so I'll have two tool paths to run for side two. My wasteboard alignment hole, get that board flipped over down on those pins, and then just put my quarter inch end mill in, or it's already in. Uh, just uh, retouch off and uh, go to town. Now, I do not want to confuse you with this because I don't want you cutting into your table. But if you recall, I am cutting off of my, my Z zero is my waste board. So if I were, let me, uh, let me, let me draw this out because I do not want to confuse anyone. Imagine that this is my CNC table. Imagine that this is my waste board on my CNC table. And imagine that this is my project board. And imagine that this is my router and my router bit. <clears throat> now, if I take, uh, oops, if I take these three objects and go into my alignment tool, I can center them all up so it looks more like a router. And uh, let me use my up arrow key. And let me make my router bit just a little bit longer. And I'm going to group this together. Okay. Now, when I zero out my machine, Z0 is my waste board. When I tell my machine I want to cut a quarter of an inch deep, it raises up to a safe Z height and clears my board. And instead of cutting from zero to a quarter, it cuts from three quarter down a quarter to, you know, a half inch. Um, it does all the math for me. It knows what my job setup is. 
You know, it knows that I'm working off the bottom of my material. It knows that I'm working with three quarter inch material. So it does the math backwards. So from zero, it raises up. And instead of cutting from zero to a quarter, it cuts from three quarters down to a half, still cuts that quarter inch deep. Now, on side one, I'm drilling my three eighths of an inch holes, my alignment holes in side one. And um, when I take that board off to mill my alignment holes, if I just come in here and say start at zero and cut quarter of an inch, well, what it's going to do is exactly what it does with everything else. It's going to raise up to a safe height and it's going to cut from three quarters down a quarter of an inch, down to a half an inch. And so I'm going to be air carving. So I have to re-zero out my, or I don't have to re-zero out my Z, uh, but what I have to do is I have to make sure that I say start depth is three quarters of an inch and then cut a quarter. Because what it's going to do is from zero, it's going to raise up and move over the board or over what it thinks the board is there. It's not. Uh, and it's going to go down to three quarters of an inch. And then from there, it's going to cut a quarter of an inch deep into my wasteboard. All right. If you guys and girls were working off the top of your material and your zero was the top of your material and you cut, you know, your your alignment holes in your board. Uh, hold on. Let's bring our board back. So if you work off the top of the material and Z zero and you come in and you drill your alignment holes in your board and everything. Well, that's zero, that three quarter inch. It's above three quarter inch above the wasteboard. So if I come over here and I create my, um, my cut depth is, you know, zero to a quarter, I want to make sure that I come over and I zero out on my wasteboard and cut that quarter of an inch. And then... When I put my little alignment pins in and I flip my board over and drop it on my table before I run my other tool pass, you want to come over and you want to re-zero out your Z and then run your tool pass for side two. Does everybody understand that? I need a yes or a no in the box because I don't want you... Uh, it was because the most important thing is, is if you get these files in this drilling operation, you're going to have a start depth here of three quarters. And, um, I don't want you cutting through your table. You know what I mean? Know what I mean? All right, I'm going to calculate my toolpath. Oh, wait, hold on. I was trying to calculate a toolpath on that demonstration there. Uh, I'll leave that on there for a moment. Let's come over here and grab my holes. And let me calculate that toolpath. And this is saying, hey, you're cutting through your material thickness because it thinks I'm working off the, you know, I'm cutting through the top of my material. It thinks my board, my three quarter inch board is still there. And, um, you know, it's not. So it's going to cut past my three quarter inches where my board was and cut to an inch depth. So it's going to cut that quarter of an inch into my wasteboard. So from the top of where my board was, it's going to cut down one inch, which means an eighth inch in, or a quarter inch into my wasteboard. So I'm fine with that. I'll click OK and um, and everything. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, remember the marble holes come down. Don't want to get all the way through. Yeah, the marble holes are on this side, um, David. The marble holes are in there, 0. 0.7. And I've got my two holes and I'm not cutting through. Uh, you know, so um, I'm good. I got that. I, I still got some skin of wood and everything, so I should be good there. And so this is the, this is four of the eight pieces. And I'd probably do, you know, I'd have 
you know, one board of maple, one board of cherry, one board of walnut, something, you know, I would, you know, some nice contrasting wood, or I could just do the same wood all the way around, whatever you want, you know, try to, you know, give it some, you know, dress up, but this is a nice board. So we have our top piece. When it connects that pocket that's on the other side, that little pocket right there that's on the other side slips over that tenon and, uh, you know, creates those, that pivot, that game point and all that uh, I um, showed you guys earlier. Let's uh, turn off some of these layers, Lord of mercy. Uh, um, did I delete those? I bet you. Oh, yeah, I did an undo on all of them. Daggum it. I did an undo on all of them and deleted them. But yes, there's nothing on there. I can delete these two layers. There's nothing on them. Delete layer two and delete layer three. Uh, layer two, I can delete that. Layer one. There we go. Layer one. So that's what gives me my parts. And this is a fun, you know, little thing to make. And if we could take a moment um, and enjoy that, we just made that from scratch. It's not my idea, by the way. This is this is a game that's out there, guys and girls. I'm just showing you how to how you would design and cut it. <laughs> of course, I didn't invent a game. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let me see here. Let's go back. Let's open up another Vetric here. Uh, I'm going to right click and VCAR Pro 10. And we're going to wrap up with, if you guys have any questions about anything CNC, uh, you know, uh, Vetric related or anything like that, ask them now because we're going to be wrapping up here shortly. Uh, let me open up an existing file. And let me go to my backup drive CAD cam game night folder and let's see let me show you some of the games we had so aggravation uh, spire nine spire nine let's go back here I know I got an hold on a second I know I got an aggravation that is, let me go back into game night, game night class files. Did I, oh yeah, pro and aspire. Oh wait, does that say pro and aspire on the other one? Hold on. Pro and aspire, yeah. The desktop pro and aspire. Okay, I can't even remember how I saved my own files. Um, let's go with this one and uh, this one here. So the good old, uh, Fashion reliable um, aggravation game, right? A little marble game and everything. Let's go over here and look and see what we got. Lots of tool paths. This was a single sided project. Uh, if we come in here and let's uh, preview all the tool paths on this, so we can see the old aggravation game. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Right. So that was the aggravation board that we made uh, in 2018. Could probably be dressed up now with some rounded over corners and stuff with a round over bit. Probably do something a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? Um, so that was aggravation. Let's close that and let's open. Um, let's come back to game night and. Uh, Connect 4 game, that was a fun one. Aspire and Pro 9, Desktop Pro and Aspire 9, Connect 4. This one was like a little box uh, that actually had uh, parts and everything that um, folded up. So there was it took three boards to cut it out. And um, it was, do I have, oops, what are you doing here? 
let me see here. Let me go uh, file close. Or not file close. Let me go back over here. And so board one cut out in holes. Preview the visible tool pass. Uh, let's stop that for a minute. And let's turn that preview simulation quality down so it's a little bit faster. So this was um, like board one, and let's see here, board one profile cut. So this would be the cutout preview that visible toolpath. And so these two pieces got glued together to create the slot in the middle for the Connect Four game. That was cool. Uh, board two. Preview visible tool pass. That was the, looks like the box frame. Yep. And the game pieces. So that was the parts of the box, uh, the little box that it got made up. And board three. That was also, uh, that was the other players game pieces and the other parts of the board, the box and all. Uh, and it was nice. I think I have a 3D rendering of that um, and stuff uh, of that. Uh, so that was the Connect 4 game we did in 2018 before I posted anything on Spindle TV. And uh, let's see here. If I go into my folder, ooh, that was, game night, Connect 4. And I did, I do, I do have it. Connect four for class, connect four, one of these. See if we can open that up and see what it looks like in 3D, all assembled with the box that I made. Yeah, so, um, this was the box that kind of the wooden box that it came in. And then the, the board game uh, had its stand. Uh, these two parts here uh, were the stands. So it stands up and then the game pieces were inside. That was that project. We did that in 2018. That was a fun project. Uh, and it packs away nice in its own little box. We did that one. Uh, and then um, last but not least, we had, um, we did a cribbage board. We did a deer in the woods and all cribbage board. And then we did a, everybody knows what a cribbage board looks like. We did a tic-tac-toe board. This was the final rendering. Desktop Pro and Aspire 9, tic-tac-toe board 2, 3. Oh my gosh. Um, we'll open this one up. See what it is yeah this was a cool one uh let's go over and look at the tool pass on that so now i can add pegs and marbles marbles and pegs or or, or uh uh pegs and jokers marbles and jokers to the game to it i'll have to learn the name if i if i'm even going to play it uh, preview all the tool paths. So we had a big old pocket cut on this piece. Um, that was pocketed out. And then we had the player areas. All right. So we had kind of like, uh, this game area here and little pegs and everything. And that was board one. That was board one. Board two. Uh, 
was cutting out the O's. What was it doing? What's this one doing? Preview all the toolpaths. Yep, it was cutting out. Uh, oh, yeah, there was a little nice little decorative rim frame around there. And then uh, it was cutting out uh, that part. It was all, yeah, I did inlays. It was all inlays. And then board three. Close that. What was board three? Oh, man, it's hard to remember what you go back to and stuff. And all. Okay, and board three were the uh the, you know some of the game pieces and everything yeah the center board inlay for the mills there was inlays and everything yeah and i don't think i have a 3d rendering of what uh, or even a, a real picture of that project and all but so now i have another board to add to game night and what i may do is uh make these other projects available to you guys and girls um as well we'll see uh it all depends on how nice you are to me no i'm just kidding uh, but yeah we had some we had some fun with game nights and stuff i like making board games and then adding to the collection uh there's some pretty cool stuff the connect four game i really liked uh it was pretty sweet and so i might share that one with you and stuff uh the other ones they were all right aggravation and all so david garbett says um he's got a question he says laney if you were doing a two-sided project on three-quarter inch board, uh, three-quarter inch in, in board, the first path for the alignment holes uh, would go all the way through and into the waste board. No, Dave. Now that's one method, Dave. Let me let, let me explain to you here. Um, one method is to drill holes all the way through your project board and into your waste board. And in order to do that, in order to do that, your holes need to be perfectly, oops. In alignment with one another and either at the center or, you know, the center, depending on which way you're flipping it and everything. If I'm flipping it along the X, uh, it's going to be aligned uh, horizontally. If I'm flipping along the Y, it's going to be aligned uh, vertically. And method number two, where you cut partially way through the first side of the board here, and then partial way in your actual waste board, your holes can be anywhere. Uh, they don't have to, they can be, uh, what is that? What's the term asymmetrical? They don't have to be asymmetrical. They can, you can, you can put hole, your holes anywhere. They don't have to be in perfect alignment. And also this method by cutting partially through here and then partially into your waste board does not restrict you to that X, Y position at that very given moment. Um, if I carve side one, then I got to, you know, shut down my machine and I've got to run, uh, you know, uh, another project because a customer just said, uh, you know, they're, they're yelling at me saying, Hey, we got to get this done. Uh, we got an urgent order at all. And I'm like, man, I didn't get side two carved. Well, when they start carving the whatever project they're carving, my X and Y is gone. So those holes that I drilled all the way through my board into my waste board, they don't do me any good. But if I have my holes drilled here and everything, I don't care if it's a week later, I can come back to my machine, touch off on my waste board, drill my quarter inch deep holes in my waste board for side two, my waste board holes the toolpath over here, my waste board holes. Okay. I can drill those in my waste board and then I can flip my board over and clamp it. It doesn't matter. Now I'm working off of that, that X, Y, zero, and I'm perfectly aligned. So it doesn't restrict me to having to get it done right then and there. And I prefer this method more because uh, I like to be able to place my holes anywhere on my board uh, um, and, and everything. So David, uh, wouldn't want to drill all the way through the board into your waste board to create those alignment holes, unless your holes were perfectly aligned with one another, either horizontally or vertically, depending on which way you're flipping. And, um, you, uh, you, you're, you're by doing it that way, you're restricted to that X, Y position at that current time. 
So you got to get it done this way. It doesn't matter if you get one side done today, one side done next month, you can go back, you can drill your alignment holes in your, or your waste port holes, drop your pins in, flip your board over and carve side two and everything is still aligned and perfect and all. So I prefer the, uh, this method cutting partially way through on the waste board, cutting partially way through on the top of my board, my project board. Hopefully that made sense to you and everything. So what I've got going on here, because so the software Vetric thinks like if I look at my, if I look at my waste board tool pass, right? If I come into my 3d view and look at my waste board tool paths here, if I were to say, start from zero and cut a quarter of an inch and calculate that tool path, I got to get rid of those duplicate vectors. If I come in, if I'm, if I'm in preview mode here uh, and I preview that tool path, it thinks that I'm cutting those holes in the side two of my project board. So it's cutting, you know, from three quarters, from three quarters, look at the numbers down here, from three quarters down to my, you know, it's cutting that three eighths of an inch deep um, hole, uh, you know, down to three eighths, uh, you know, or a quarter inch deep hole, sorry. Um, let me get down to it, Brr, get in there. It's, it's cutting that, that, that hole here, but I'm not cutting it in my board. I'm cutting it in my waste board, which is three quarter inches down, you know? So I've got to set the tool path to start because I'm working off the bottom of my material, my job setup, my job setup. Once again, as a refresher, my job setup is working off the machine bed. My waste board is my zero position. So it's got, you know, when it raises up to cut that quarter of an inch deep hole, it's only going to cut from three quarters to a quarter in my board. Well, I need to go past that board because that board's not on the table right now. I need to go past that board to my waste board and cut my holes in my waste board. So I need to start my waste board alignment holes at three quarters, cut down a quarter. And for those guys and girls that start on the top of their material, they can set their cut depths, you know, start zero, cut a quarter of an inch. And the only thing they do is when they move the project board out of the way, they touch off their Z and re Z on the waste board, cut the quarter of an inch holes, put the board on the waist, you know, on the pins, clamp it down and re zero out their Z on the top of their board and carve all the side two files. No, Dave, you don't drill the waste board first. Uh, Warren, you play all the games? Cool. Very, very cool. All right. So Tim says, I did the alignment holes just the way you taught in the video for making the round boxes. It worked very nicely. Thanks, Tim. Awesome, man. Cool. Very cool. Uh, which is, I believe that's the same way I'm talking about the method that I'm talking about now. Cutting partially way through and then... When that board's out of the way, cutting into your waste board and use your pins and everything. But yeah, man, awesome. And uh, yeah, Dave, uh, we you don't drill the waste board first. Waste boards, uh, you you you, you know, I've got side one right. Got my board clamped on the table. Got everything nice and fresh. Let me put this back. Oh, oh, wait, there's a close button. <laughs> I'm trying to double click it. All right, I got my waist, I got my board. It's clamped on my table, right? Got it clamped on the table. And I come in to uh, side one and I want to do my alignment holes first, then my box core bit, and then my end mill. So we're going to come in and it's uh, it's going to drill my two little alignment holes and it's going to do my box core bit. And actually, I don't need my box core, my holes first on this one. That's why I had it in the other position. I don't want to do an extra tool change. 
So those holes that are in the top of the board here, they're only three eighths of an inch deep. Those two alignment holes right there. All right. So once side one is all done and everything, I'm going to unclamp my board and move it out of the way. Okay. Which I can't, I can't make my board disappear here. Wait, maybe I can't. I'm going to unclamp my board and, uh, it won't let me. <laughs> um, and I'm going to move my board out of my way. And then I'm going to um, come in. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my wasteboard alignment holes. So come in and on my wasteboard, it's going to come over and cut my quarter inch deep holes in my wasteboard. Now I'm going to put my pins in. And bring my other board back, flip it over, and slide it onto those pins. And then I'm going to run the rest of my tool pass. So, my side two tool pass. So, you, you do your wasteboard drilling after you carve side one. And this is a fun game. This will be a fun project and everything. Uh, and, and all uh, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, I like the versatility of going from a two player to a four player to a six player to an eight player. Right. And, um, you know, if you don't want to make eight pieces, make six pieces, make it a maximum six player game for you or what have you. But I'll have this file for you along with the the uh, kind of the rules and how the cards work. You use three decks of cards. Um, and, uh, the, uh, give you an example, like for instance, let's say that someone draws an ACE. That means either bring, uh, one of their marbles out of that starting home position, um, or move if they're already out, they can move one hole forward. Um, if they draw two, three, four, five, or six, that's, you know, two holes, three holes, four holes, you know, you know, you're moving forward. You're trying to get all the way around. Um, you know, the seven, eight, nine, and 10 cards uh, mean something. And then your Jack, Queen, and King cards mean something. Uh, your Joker cards actually mean something. And, uh, you know, um, it's pretty cool. So it's a fun little game. And I'll have all the little rules and stuff for you, uh, along with the instructions of it, of how to play it. And uh, you can have some fun with that. All right. <laughs> So uh, any questions, guys, because it's 941. I'd like to wrap up in uh, four minutes at 945. We're going to try to get out of here before 10 o'clock tonight. Lord of mercy. I talk too much. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll get these uh, layers cleaned up. I'll get the tool pass cleaned up and organized. Uh, I'll make sure the instructions are nice and organized and stuff. And uh, I'll put them in a zip file and I'll, you'll have the download link in the description of this video uh, and have some fun with it. If any of you, you got to, if any of you make this project, if any of you make any of the projects that I teach you here on Spindle TV, I would love if you're on Facebook to share a photo uh, on the, the uh, Spindle training videos page on Facebook. Spindle training videos on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash spindle TV. Uh, share, share a picture of the projects you made uh, from any of the classes. I would love to see them. That would be amazing uh, to be able to see if any of you make this. And especially if any of you make this game and stuff. Now, remember the marble sizes are uh, nine sixteenths in diameter. If you get different marble sizes and you want different colors, you, you want the solid color marbles. You can get them on Amazon, you know, uh, by, you know, a certain amount of count and stuff. Um, each player has uh, five marbles, you know, that they get and a sixth one for indicating their color and stuff. So let's say six times eight, uh, 48 um, uh, marbles, if you will. But um, the uh, different color marbles, but if you use different diameter marbles, make sure that your little pockets match you know so the marble rests in there nicely and it doesn't roll off or any of that stuff um but uh they're 9 16 inch marbles uh i haven't ordered mine yet from amazon and all i'm going to be making this project as well uh it looks like a fun one to uh crank out 
and it's very easy. Let's see here. Let's look at our time real quick. Uh, our while you guys are talking. So um, let's flip this over and let's select all the tool paths from side one. I wonder if it'll let me stay selected for side two. And if I go into the clock, all the tool paths from side one and side two, 36 minutes to knock out this project. Not bad, right? That's that's quick, you know, and stuff. So uh, you can probably knock it out quicker, depending on if you have a bigger machine that runs outrageous feed rates and stuff like that uh, and everything. So, uh, but 36 minutes to knock out uh, those uh, eight pieces. One, two, three, four. That's four pieces, sorry. Uh, so about an hour to knock out eight pieces. Um, and you'd have an eight-player game. And, uh, you know, it could be something that you, like, if you sell your projects, whatever, you can make that and, you know, package it up really pretty and stuff and sell it as a little kit for people. Fun times, good times. Yeah, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and, uh, yeah, mostly quarter-inch end mill bit. Uh, we, have, we do have a three-eighths inch diameter box core bit, which would basically be a three sixteenths inch radius. Uh, box core bit, you know, making those holes. Um, and uh, you could pick one of those up from Lowe's real cheap if you wanted to, or you could pick one up online too from Amazon. Marbles you can get from Amazon, and um, yeah, just a little bit of time and have some fun with it. All right, guys, I want to thank you very much for joining me tonight. And let's see here. Uh, you're welcome to everyone that thanked me. Um, and uh very cool so hope you enjoyed this one it's just a fun little one that i can add to the game night what i'll do is i'm going to go back and revisit uh, those files from 2018 see if anything needs to be updated and stuff and uh you know uh we'll see if we can throw in a uh you know a connect four board game or something and it, with the box and stuff or all uh it'd be a fun little project to make or or what have you um I may revisit with you guys since you've never seen it, uh, you know, here on Spindle TV, the tic-tac-toe game, because that one involves inlaying. And we really haven't talked a whole lot about inlaying uh, recently. We've talked about it in the past, but we haven't really talked about doing inlay projects. So the tic-tac-toe board is a very cool little, simple, nice board, but it involves some inlaying uh, and everything, and uh, which is pretty cool. So we might we might address that in all. Um, so Tim uh, asked a great question and I, and guys, this is a very good one to pay attention to. Do you do a live show the same night each week? Tim? Yes, I do. And 99% of the time it is Tuesday nights from seven till when we finish in this case, uh, seven to nine 45, but, uh, um, it's Tuesday nights. But last night I had an emergency with my pet come up and I had to take it to the vet. So we had to postpone to tonight. And generally, if I postpone, I will post something for the Digital Woodcarver Owners Group and the, the Owners Group and for everyone else on Facebook, uh, on the Spindle Training Videos page. Uh, you know, if I, if I have to postpone or put it to a different night, but it's usually Tuesday nights from 7 to 9. And tonight, we just had to do it this evening uh, because we couldn't do it last night. So, but yes, every week. All right, everybody. I think that we've got uh, Moon. Mar Wait a minute, Thomas. Give me a little real quick. They might. This might be. Answered. Are you referring something? Moon Marble, Baser, Kansas. Moon Marble. Is that like a marble dealership or something, or are you just like saying, "Hey, say say this ten times real fast." Moon Marble, Bases, Kansas. <laughs> is that a, is that a dealer or a vendor, Thomas? Let me know. So, uh, and all that. And yeah, I'll say it this time because, uh, you know, yeah, usually someone else throws it in there. But guys, if you liked this project, if you like this video, give a thumbs up, uh, share it. That helps, uh, you know, kind of promote the channel a bit uh, and, and everything. Uh, but definitely give a thumbs up and, and all. Uh, that'd be cool if you liked it and everything. But uh, Thomas, I'm about to say goodbye. So is that... Moon Marble Baser Kansas is that a vendor 
that we could refer people to to get marbles or is that a it is a marble store it carries thousands of marble and they are on the internet awesome all right guys and girls so a marble store based out of kansas moon marble baser kansas uh moon marble uh i'm assuming baser kansas uh, baser is the city but anyway Check them out. They're on the internet. Uh, look up their website and everything, and they got thousands of marbles and all, and that might be a good resource. So do some price comparative shopping and all, and that might be the way to go. All right. Thank you for that, Thomas. Everybody, y'all have a great night. Until next time, I'll see you.